So hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Haunt Jump. And today we have, it's Bridget Taylor, right? Yep. Okay. I yep. didn't know. Maybe you said Brigitte or something. I don't know. So like, <laughs> I get that a lot too. And I'm like, I wish I was Brigitte, but no, it's Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget. Okay. We have Bridget Taylor. And if you follow the blog, you may have noticed a post about a vodka called Heridan's. Right. Am I saying that right? Uh, Heridan. Just one Heridan. Oh, yeah. Heridan. Heridan. Not Heridan's. Heridan. And it was about a paranormal preserve where some bottles were aged in three haunted locations and that like fired me up. So I, of course, wrote about it, and then I reached out to them and said, hey, does anybody want to talk with them? And they said, yes. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome. <for that. laughs> so and excited to be here. I just have to ask. So I'm going to start. I kind of have all today I have Mac together. Um, from your press release, you had written that Harridan means a bossy, belligerent old woman and is an homage to the bold and bellicose women of the past whose defiance often made them a target, which I loved because that totally, like, I just have this little streak in me all the time of just rebelliousness. And so that appealed. Yeah. I was like, oh, that is very cool. But why vodka? Like, there's so many ways to rebel. So why did you choose spirits and vodka? And what's the story? Yeah. So uh, I was getting a graduate degree in March of 2020, which we all know that time of our lives. Well, <laughs> everyone knows where they were. Uh, so obviously the pandemic hit, all my classes moved to Zoom. And, you know, for anyone who's ever been a student, especially anyone who's going through the virtual environment right now, you know, it's really hard to stay engaged. And so for me, I had all this time on my hands in this graduate program, and I had a couple of people in my quarantine pod, and we all just got really into making cocktails just as a way to connect and relax and, you know, have fun. Like other people were making sourdough and banana bread. Like we got really, really into mixology and what became really clear first was I felt like there were all these awesome craft te tequila brands and whiskey brands and gin brands. And at least in my neighborhood in Boston, there really wasn't that much vodka or craft vodka that felt available to me. So that was the first thing on my radar. And then as I became a little bit more obsessed with, you know, why aren't there more interesting craft vodkas? Um, I also started to increasingly notice there were barely any women in the spirit space. And it's insane how few women there are. And so then I was like, wait a minute, like there needs to be more representation in this industry. There needs to be a vodka shakeup. And with all this time on my hands, cause I'm in school and not really having to go to class other than dialing in virtually or zooming in virtually. Um, <laughs> I was like, why don't I, why don't I try starting this business? And it isn't really a business you can enter casually in the sense that it's very, very highly regulated. Um, obviously requires a lot of time to design your packaging and to come up with your recipe. So once I was in, I was all in. I've never looked back. I absolutely love, love the industry. And uh, yeah, that's how we got, that's how we got Herodin off the ground. And last thing to your point, um, the word Herodin means an angry, belligerent old woman. We were trying to turn what, what women are traditionally marketed to for alcohol or how alcohol typically markets to women. We were trying to turn that on its head a little bit, whereas women are typically confronted with pink and flowery and light and low alcohol volume. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but there are women like me, and I'm sure like you who like dark and who like witchy and who prefer that aesthetic over the flowery aesthetic. And that's exactly what we were looking to do with Heritage. Oh my God, mission accomplished. And it's, <laughs> it's an awesome name. I mean, I didn't know that I was like, and so that's what I love. I love when I learn something new and I was like, oh, this is very cool, but it's, a, this, this is awesome. I mean, yeah. way to go. And what's your, <laughs> yeah. what's your degree in? Like, was that something you could transition easily into making the packaging and your awesome website? And oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, so my degree was in business, which 
was helpful in the sense of starting a company, but I'm lucky in that I have really, really talented friends and family who I could immediately rely on to support me. So for example, the bottle and label was designed by my my cousin and we worked really closely together on ideating what this would look like. And so he was a, a critical critical partner in this. And then my current chief brand officer, she is actually my sister's best friend from college. And so we were connected and I was like, I need your help in terms of crafting this brand story. And so then, you know, across the three of us, we were able to get the brand off the ground with a great website. And we locked down a distillery to help us come up with an amazing recipe and rest was history. Oh my God. So are we going to see you on Shark Tank? (laughs) <laughs> well, it's fine. I'm intimidated to go on Shark Tank because I feel like I know exactly what they're going to say. They're going to be like, it's a crowded business and, you know, and it's very competitive. And so for me, I believe in Harridan because I believe in the brand more than anything. I'm like, I know this speaks to people. And then it just so happens to be the best vodka out there, period. So I'm like, I know my market's there. And if Shark will Tank find you. Yeah, choose me away, then... It's their loss. <laughs> yes. And if you craft it, they will come. Exactly. Exactly. And it still would be awesome because at least you like you would get such a good audience. And I'd be so curious. Like, like the first thing I thought, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like you could totally go on there and it'd be awesome if you got like three war deal, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe now I'll look into it. I'd kind of written it. I kind of written off being like, no, nah, Shark Tank, they'll definitely turn me down. But why not? Even the people that get rejected still, still do. get visibility. Yeah. So. And some of them, like you said, they were rejected, but they've gone on to, you know, yeah. be major big deal. So you're you're there. So that's yeah, cool. exactly. I'll be in good company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So then my next question, I might have to put on my readers for um, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, this one is a good one. So I don't know anything about vodka. So, and like you said, you had to get a distillery, but what all goes into to making vodka? Oh, that's a great question. And so what the route that I wanted to do, and there's two routes you can go, is one, you can buy all the equipment and, you know, get a degree in whatever chemical engineering, that route, or some, you know, learn how to go to a ton of distilling conferences and really learn the craft in addition to investing in the equipment and open your own distillery and go that route. The second route is you can find an existing distillery and partner with their master distiller to come up with a recipe and you become a client of the distillery, but it's still your liquid. So I went the second route because I was like, I don't, and the, the first route just sounded very, uh, very capital intensive. I was a student. I didn't have the money. Um, so when the second route found, I tried a ton of vodka from a ton of different distilleries and just found this one distillery in upstate New York who truly made the best vodka I'd ever had. And however, his vodkas were only made with wheat. And I really wanted my vodka to be corn because you can make vodka from pretty much any base, which is wild. Um, like you can make vodka from grape, you can make it from potato. It's, you know, you can make it from all sorts of base ingredients. And I had tried a ton of base ingredients. And my favorite one time and time again was corn vodka. So I asked him, could we partner together on a corn recipe? And he was all in and agreed. And the recipe that we settled on, it's actually an overproof vodka. So normal vodka is around 40% alcohol by volume or exactly 40% alcohol by volume. And ours is 44. So it's a little higher. And that was an accident. We tried a bunch of samples of corn vodka at his distillery. And the one that we just happened to like the best was accidentally 44 proof or sorry, 44% 88 proof. And so it was a bit of an accident how we decided to be an overproof vodka, but it makes us more interesting. Oh, yeah. And what's the, di- like, I didn't know when you said the percent and the proof, what's that d- differences? So when you, when you make vodka, you essentially, it, it, it's a, it starts off as like a hundred percent alcohol, and then you dilute it down to something that's drinkable. Oh. And so what hospitals would use is anything that would be 
I think it was 60% or 60% or maybe no 70% or above percent alcohol is what like hospitals use to clean okay. surfaces. But what humans drink is 40%. So, you know, less, um, it's watered down alcohol more. Oh, wow. Wow. And so we're a little bit, I guess, closer to hospital grade. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I don't it's, hear anything that's ailing you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's interesting. Gin, for example, gin tends to be between 42% and like 45% alcohol. Whiskey tends to be between like 40% to some, some go up to like 55%. Uh, and so we're, we're kind of playing more in like the gin and the whiskey space that in terms of percent out al- or percent alcohol than the traditional vodka space. Wow. And yours is you made it, you were able to make it gluten-free. Yep. Naturally gluten-free from that, from that corn base. And it's, it's distilled from organic corn. So we only use organic ingredients, which is also great. That's even better. So organic and gluten-free. I yep. look like for that on all my labels, like, you know, where's that little? So that's cool. No brainer at this point. You're like, yeah, I totally agree with you. I do as well. Yeah. Who wants this dadded in stuff? No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're just like peace of mind. I know alcohol is not good for me, but I'm going to drink it. <laughs> At least want it to be organic and gluten-free. Exactly. Then it's even a little better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh yeah. And so now we get to the, the paranormal reserve and Ooh. what inspired that like were you into ghosts or did what happened what is that story so I have always been a paranormal enthusiast and I have been obsessed with horror scary horror movies scary movies they're the only movies I ever want to watch and yeah like like Hauntrons is like, you're my people. Like, I just, I love, love paranormal, scary things. And so, and I mean, that influence is very much in Herodin. Like we're a dark and witchy brand. And it's funny, my chief brand officer sometimes has to tone me down a little bit because I'm like, let's go full goth, like full dark. And she's like, no, no, let's like, let's broaden our brand message. We can do that sometimes, but like, broaden it out. Uh, so anyways, so we have this, these awesome creatives that we work with who ideate with us to help us come up with on brand and interesting ways we can reach our consumer that are outside of our day-to-day business activities. And so we went to them and we were like, we want to do something unbelievable for Halloween. And they know our brand ethos. They know we're dark. So like Halloween for us, isn't going to be like a cute kitten, like Halloween for us is going to be like spooky. And so they, they came back to us with this idea and it started, it started out as what if we brought Herodin to haunted houses and partnered with them and, you know, just like showed Herodin with the haunted house. And then we built on that and we're like, no, let's do, you know, the way that whiskey is aged in barrels let's age our vodka in haunted houses. And so then that's how the idea came about. And we reached out to about, we only reached out to about five houses and or five establishment haunted establishments. And three of them said, yes, everyone was super friendly and supportive and on board. And of course we, we paid them. So you know, it's not like we were ripping off these haunted houses and tricking them into having them store vodka. Like they were truly our partners in this. And it was aside from the bottles themselves, I think just being a really, really fantastic product or just like item to have around your house. If you're a paranormal enthusiast, like we are, it was also such a fun experience to do. Like we spent the whole day at the conjuring house just doing photo shoots throughout the house, talking with the owners and hearing their experiences. And I mean, it, I will remember this experience for the rest of my life. It was so cool. And I can only hope that every year that we do the Paranormal Reserve, that we're able to really build on how awesome this initial launch was and just keep making it better. 
Oh my God, that's awesome. And just to clarify, so everybody knows, it was The Conjuring House, Velisca Axe Murder House, and Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, right? Exactly. Exactly. Whoa, that is... I know. I, know. I, I, I'm, I'm, sh- I'm actually not shocked, but it's also super cool that they responded and they knew, they recognized right away. That's an awesome idea. Oh my God. Everyone was like, can we also have an extra bottle of vodka that like we can cheer us with? And we're like, of course, we'll send you, we'll send you vodka. Uh, so everyone definitely had a lot of fun with it. And, and a funny example. So at the conjuring house, one of the, the owner, his, his name is Corey and we are, we're in the basement, which is one of the highest activity house or rooms in the house. And especially in the well, which apparently if anyone is a conjuring horror fan like me, it's rumored that like Bathsheba, the, the, she was, she was a woman, but like her demonic soul kind of rests in that well. And so initially we weren't going to go near the well because we were all too scared. But as the day went on, we were emboldened. Corey comes downstairs to check in being like, how are you guys doing? And he was like, you got to lower the bottles into the well. It's, you have to, he was like, you're here. You have all these bottles. You have to lower them into the well. And so, and he gets us this rope from his closet and he's like, here, use this. We'll all lower it in. And that's what we wound up doing. And I mean, I'm curious those, those homes that those bottles are resting in, if there's any paranormal activity happening, but you know, we didn't, we didn't just leave the bottles outside. The bottles really went in and had a full conjuring immersion. Oh my God. <laughs> I, that's what I want. That is like one of my questions. I don't know where it is on the list, but since you brought it up, let me see really quick. Um, well, I'll just skip to that and then I'll come back. But have you heard from anybody yet from any that has bought? Cause they all sold out like that, right? They saw, it was unbelievable. We had no idea how well the, or how, how enthusiastic that customers were going to be. Uh, so I've only heard one story so far, aside from the stories that I have myself. So the one story that we've heard is a customer took her bottle into a, a, a hotel that has a haunted reputation and she has a podcast and she's sitting down with, to begin set up for the podcast and there's a knock at her door and she opens it. There's no one there. There's a family that's walking down the hall and she asked them, she was like, did you see anyone knock on my door? And they were like, no, there hasn't been anyone walking in the hallway. So she, that was, that was one that we heard that was like, Ooh, like that's pretty creepy. And then for me, uh, there's now in this, is I've lived in this apartment. This is my second year I've lived in this apartment. Um, we now have a light ever since the bottle, the conjuring house in particular is in my apartment right now. Ever since it came here, we have this one light that turns on by itself. And we're not talking like once a day, but it's turned on by itself twice since the bottle came in my apartment. So. Wow. So, and, it, and it didn't happen before. So it did you not happen that, before. Like, okay. That's yeah, it's not. It's not like before it was like, oh, that dang light always turns on. It was like, suddenly we have a light that turns on by itself. And it's That's cool. yeah. See, oh my God. So, I love it. Just as long as it stays, you know, exactly. nice. Yeah. Pleasant and nice. It has Great. a nice home. You know, it's not being jostled around. It's resting. Well, your so, apartment looks lovely. And you said you're in Boston. I'm in New York now. Oh, New yeah. York. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a that's really cool. old apartment. It's um, pre-Civil War. Very <gasps> old. Yeah. Ooh. No, so maybe I'm like, the are like, are... yeah, finally, <laughs> we got some good stuff going on in here. I know. That's, I'm like, I hope maybe they'll be emboldened to come out, you know? They're like they're... friends. No. Yeah, exactly. Some paranormal <laughs> Vodka spirits. <laughs> That's awesome. Can you just picture them having their little yeah, having a drink? Maybe I'll start leaving it out, like cookies for Santa Claus. Vodka <laughs> for my apartment. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and then, okay, so now I'll backtrack a little bit. Um, oh, we kind of touched on the haunted locations, but did you did you have like a list that you said I want? Like, did you have like a first tier or whatever said, I really want these or how did you pick or? 
Yeah. So we, so the conjuring house was a no brainer um, because I love that movie or I love that movie terrified me to my core, but I did really like it. So that was a pipe dream. We were like, they'll never respond, but we'll try. Uh, and then, and then the other two, we just started, we just hit the internet and we're like, let's come up with a short list. And our short list again was only five places. And this was after, this was a short list that we devised in like an hour. So now we're starting to get some suggestions from customers of houses to do next year. And I'm reading these stories and I'm like, oh my God, like w- there's so many cool paranormal establishments that we can work with. Cause I was worried after this year, I was like, shoot, did we choose the three best ones? And like, we did it all in one year. Um, but then I was like, no, my God, not even close. Like we didn't even scratch the surface. So there's a lot, a lot left to do. <laughs> Exciting. And I'm saving yeah. my, my, my end question for, for that, but we're definitely circling back around because <laughs> that would have been a good segue though, but it make a good segue yeah, for me. We can, we can wait. I, I shouldn't have brought it up. I shouldn't have brought it up. No, no, no. Definitely <laughs> bring it up because that question has to be asked. So yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, okay. So we went over the packaging a little bit. Let me read again. Um, oh yeah. So that great, that keepsake box and the handmade leather neck tag and oh, the cloth gloves. I had to know what, what is that like? Is that how you normally would handle such good vodka or is it to keep the spirits away? Like what was up with the gloves? Yeah, that is a good question. So we're very small brands, as you know. And when we did, when we were doing this reserve, I, I was the one who was packing up all the boxes myself and like all 60 boxes have been hand touched and like, I didn't kiss them, but in my mind, I did before I like laid them in the boxes. Uh, and I, be, as, the, as the haunted bottles are all cut, arriving at my apartment, I just had this instinct. I was like, I don't want to touch them. And it, it was just fear. And then, and then I was like, well, if I don't want to touch them. I don't want to send them to customers and be like, I didn't want to touch them, but like, you can touch them with your bare hands. <laughs> yeah. So then we just made a team decision. We were like, let's include gloves and all of them. So people feel more safe to handle them. So and you can use the gloves for other things. They're very nice, like stretchy gloves, but they're, we intended them to be, to use, to feel some level of protection when touching the bottle. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Like, I didn't know if it was for that or like, you don't want to heat it with your hand. Like I couldn't imagine. So that is so cool. Like, and it's yeah. even nice that like you can reuse them for others. That's cool. It's cool. like a bonus. I, know, I was using them the other day. I was at a tasting, say so do tastings in liquor stores and I didn't have a manicure. My nails just looked really bad. So I just wore the gloves. I was like doing them with the, my, you know, my black gloves on, but yeah, it was funny. We didn't do, we didn't do the best job or we weren't very clear in explaining what the gloves were for, but that was because the reason we didn't necessarily know how to word it being like our founder was scared to hold the bottle. He might be too. So here's some gloves. Yes, you are. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's awesome. And when you said that you worked with your creatives, that you even come up with that. I, that is like these people, if they weren't already Imagineers, like that's something they could, that's so smart. I, they're incredible incredible and they're also they're a new creative agency that's just starting out and so we're really hoping that this was kind of a dual success moment for us that this really helped make more people aware of Herodin but then the agency their name is in-house and we're their their first client we're hoping that this kind of helps elevate them so that they get additional business too they're oh, amazing I hope so too because that clearly they have talent I mean yeah. that's I never heard of anything like I thought that was just so smart. And it's so it's always so smart to partner up. But that was a partnership I never, ever saw coming. That's so smart. I totally agree. They're so wonderful. Smart. We're so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, let's see. I got to put these back on. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. And we kind of talked about this, I guess, with the with the aging. Um if they had any effect, which sort of, we talked about that, but how long do you typically age vodka? 
so vodka is typically an unaged spirit. Oh. And if you age it in a barrel or anything, it becomes corn whiskey. So it's, so it actually, it's a bit of a pun that we say it was aged because if any spirits connoisseur is listening to this, they're probably like, that's not right. So in our press release, we say the bottles were rested, but in a, in a more, you know, in a more pun way, we're like, it was aged. Uh, but typically, I mean, if you're aging a spirit, you can age it anywhere from like one month to, you know, 20 years, you can age it for a really long time. Like, you know, some good scotches and stuff like that are, you know, very aged for a very long time. Ours were only aged slash rusted for seven days. Oh, that's cool. So that explains, and I didn't even think to ask that like the rested I just thought it was super clever wording that it's like, well, that's, yeah. that's cute. Yeah. They're rusted. So I got <laughs> onto that, but, yeah. <laughs> but see, I know nothing about vodka, so I wouldn't know if it's. <laughs> yeah, and that's where we, we were using age as, you know, for the person who isn't a spirits connoisseur, they can be like, oh, that makes sense to me. But we were worried that if any industry folks were reading it, they would be like, this is not correct. And so we use both words. <laughs> oh, that's smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really smart. Okay. So I'm going to quick review my list and just make sure I hit everything. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. I love the packaging, that packaging, that bottle or the box. Well, all of it, when I saw it, um, I just have to tell you, I was like, I would have bought, I, I actually can't drink anymore. I, I think, I don't know what happened. I don't think I ever really could, but in, in college when I was back in the day, um, speaking of, uh, vodka was one of my favorites that and Jose was my best friend. And I think I just <laughs> overdid it. And now I can't, I just, I can't process it at nothing. So it's really unfortunate. Cause like, I'll try sometimes, but I would have bought, I would have, you know, gladly shared the bottle with somebody else. I just wanted that box it was cool. Yeah. And, and that's what I really want Harridan to be made for. I almost, or not me. I want here of course, to be drank, like our classic bottles that's meant to be shared with friends and enjoyed. But some of our collector's items, like the Paranormal Reserve, like we want it to be special enough that people are excited to just own it and not necessarily consume it. The same way with some rare whiskeys, like it's just something that you collect and you cherish and you pass down. And so that's kind of what our mentality is for the Paranormal Reserve. I mean, I'm too scared to drink it. I'm not sure. I'm not drinking it, but I definitely, each year we do it. I, I of course want to buy, you know, the three bottles to add to my collection just to, because they're, they're beautiful and it, oh. it'll be nice to have. And every year we'll make them a little different. And so oh, that's a good question that I would have never thought to ask too. So that's a good little tidbit you, you snuck in there, but they, they are beautiful and such a great conversation starter. I mean, wow. Oh, I, Yeah. I totally agree. That's totally awesome. Agree. And then, okay, so I'll get to the, the end question. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, because for security, people might want to break into these places and try to snag them. So probably you can't say I would imagine. I'm guessing I might be <laughs> assuming, but, um, and you kind of alluded to that you don't quite know yet, but do you have any hints you could give of what? haunted locations might be in the works for batch number two? So yes, we have not fully finalized the list yet, but trying to think what spoilers I could give. <laughs> We're heavily looking at some places in Massachusetts and that's it. I'll, I'll say, I'll say that I'll give that as like a hint for, for one of the, the houses that we're looking at, but I will say this next year, the other hint that I'll say is that we definitely want to stay in the U S for year two, and then potentially we'll start thinking internationally in future years. Ooh, that's yeah. a good one too. And do you have any other special, this sort of one I just thought of now when you were talking, um, any other special ones like this that you'll be making in the years ahead? Like, Yeah, so we are, we haven't fully decided what we're going to do yet either, but we're going to be doing something special for Midsummer. 
as kind of our other brand event. And that will likely not be a bottle specifically. That'll kind of be a larger just brand activation on our part. But we really want to put the investment and the attention around, you know, limited edition bottles to the paranormal reserve, because we wouldn't want to like every six months come out with something totally new and confuse our customer and that way, or just have like too many things going on for us. The paranormal reserve is so special and it's so core to our brand. We were like, it has to be its own beautiful moment every year. And then the other activations we do around the year can be other, you know, other cool items, but not a limited edition bottle. Oh, that's so cool. And people can find you, is it HeridanVodka.com? You can, you can do HeridanVodka.com or just Heridan.com. Both will take you to the same place. Oh, cool. And, yeah. And you can find out, uh, you can either purchase through our website or you can find the closest shop near you also on our website. Oh, that's cool. And your people, if they want to follow you on social, is it Instagram? Yes. Instagram would be great. Uh, we're at Herod and Vodka. At, okay. That's what I'm thinking. I always with. forget to, ma- to mention Instagram. Yes. Please <laughs> follow us on Instagram at Herod and Vodka. Yeah. Cause then you can see your super duper cool trailer that you made for the paranormal reserve. Like I love that. I just, Oh yeah. It's awesome. But we're going to oh, have more cool videos coming out. That's for sure. We, uh, love making those. And I think that our followers really like watching them. So oh. those are more, much more of those to come. Me and <laughs> Miles has got his hand raised too. Oh, I'll say my, my skeleton friend. So oh, I to- yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Brought him out for this. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much again for your time. I'm super excited about this and If you ever need anything else, you just let me know. It was so wonderful to talk to you and have such a great Halloween. Thank you. You Happy Halloween. (laughs) Happy Halloween. All right. Well, bye, Courtney. Bye, Bridget. (laughs) 